Uh, hi, hello. Uh, today I wanted to uh, give a quick introduction to uh, on how to enable the uh, IP Fire uh, DDoS feature that uh, I developed uh, uh, recently. So, yeah, from my previous video, I al already demonstrated the uh, DDoS feature. Uh, XTP DDoS feature on IP Fire, and uh, so this time I'm going to show you how to set it up uh, easily from the uh, IP Fire web UI. So, for example, here is my uh, IP Fire web UI, and uh, if we go to the firewall rules here, uh, I already have a um, uh, port port forward uh, rule set up. Uh, meaning if I send a, a web request to the IP firewall, the IP firewall uh, will do the port forwarding here and uh, then port forward to this uh, uh, back end server uh, behind the firewall and, uh, and the uh, port forwarding port is port 80. Yeah. So for example, uh, I can do a, a test for this port forwarding. Uh, so for example, if I fr from my client, if I send a, a HTTP request, web request to, to the IP firewall uh, public IP, uh, just assume this is uh, the, the public IP uh, or IP firewall. And uh, so it will forward to this backend server, uh, port forward into this backend server according to this uh, uh, firewall rule setup, right? So let's do a test. Okay, so we get a uh, Nginx uh, web server response from the backend server. All right. So this is the uh, uh, port forwarding rule you normally set up on IP Fire. Now, uh, for the XDP uh, DDoS feature, uh, you notice here uh, when you choose uh, when when it is TCP. Uh, I added a, a option here. It's called use XDP SIM proxy acceleration, uh, which is uh, to uh, protect this uh, uh, TCP port 80 from um, SIM flooding attack, uh, DDoS attack. So right now this feature is not enabled. By the way, we can look at the um, uh, IP table rules on the firewall for port forwarding. So if you run IP table save grab 80. So when you have uh, IP table port forwarding rules set up, you will have uh, these uh, uh, three IP table rules for, for normal uh, uh, port forwarding. Now, what if we label the XDP um, uh, SIM proxy XDP DDoS SIM proxy acceleration here, uh, it will add two extra IP table rules for XDP SIM proxy. So we check this option and then we click update and then we click apply changes. So now we, we can check the IP table rules again and uh, uh, noticed w there is a two extra rule set up. Uh, one is in the uh, uh, raw table pre-routing pre chain. Another one is uh, in the uh, input uh, uh, chain in, in filter table. So this is uh, this two, two rule is required for XTP SIM proxy DDoS, DDoS feature to work. So now we have these two rules added here. So this is a custom rule, custom chain 
I created, right? So that's that. And also after set up the IP table rules for the uh, DDoS feature, we also need to go here uh, to uh, here I added a new menu, uh, eBPF XDP DDoS protection. We click this uh, menu. Now it's a, a new web uh, page we have here. And uh, so XDP, enable XDP DDoS feature. Uh, so we can check our existing, uh, so on this uh, IP fire uh, distribution I built, uh, I added the XDP tool and we can run XDP loader status command. So right now, uh, you can see uh, the XDP sim proxy DDoS feature is not enabled. You can see here, this is the interface and there is no XDP program noted, right? But uh, now we wanted to uh, enable this uh, XDP DDoS feature and we also want uh, uh, XDP, the, the TCP port, the port forwarding port, we want to protect. We need to also click uh, check here, right? So now I'm going to, so this is just the two options we needed to check. And then now let's save. Click the save and you can see here uh, the XDP program uh, down at this page uh, is, uh, is loaded here and uh, X, a sync cookie XDP program did us. And uh, so there is a still a minor bug. So we need to click save again and uh, uh, still because we want to, uh, there is a minor bug I want because the port is not updated in the eBPF map. So uh, we need to click the save again to make sure that uh, XDP EPPF map has this port uh, populated. Okay, so now we, we, we can go to the terminal and check XDP loader uh, status. And now see on the red zero interface, we, now we have the XDP program attached, uh, sync cookie XDP program. Okay, so, and also we work uh, just for the port to check if the port is uh, updated in the eBPF map, we can run BPF tool map, and uh, we can check map dump ID. So this is the port in the eBPF map. Uh, uh, the the eBPF map name thirty five, and then we can see here uh, the port. 80 is populated in the uh, eBPF map, allow the ports, right? Yeah, so that's the reason I said uh, click the save twice to make sure that port 80 is, is stored in the eBPF map. So it is a store. And uh, yeah, so right now it, uh, the feature is enabled. Now we can uh, send a request Client request from the uh, from the client and make sure uh, it's still working, right? It's still working. Uh, the port forwarding is still working. But now, what if we wanna uh, uh, send a, a sim flooding attack uh, to attack this? Uh, now we are sending the sim flooding attack to attack the IP firewall. And uh, and now we can. So this is on the on the TCP down. Uh, this is the terminal IP4 terminal. We can BPF tool map, and then we can show the uh, the packet that is. Uh, we can check the sync act uh, packet generated by the XDP DDoS feature. To my down ID 34. So you can see here uh, the counter is increasing, right? 
So which means the DDoS feature is blocking the the same flooding attack. And uh, and uh, if you run TCP down, do I have TCP down? No, I don't have TCP down installed. But if you run TCP down on the red zero interface, the public interface, uh, you will not see the you will not see the uh, uh, sim flooding packet because it's already uh, got blocked by the by the DDoS feature in the in the driver level. In this case, in the SKB mode. So actually, we can why not we can install TCP down to just confirm. So here, yeah, the ones I like the IP fire distribution is uh, 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 very easy. It has very trivial web UI, and you can install package. So now let's reinstall TCP down. Okay. And uh, install. So uh, while I'm installing the TCP down, uh, keep in mind my DDoS uh, flooding is still uh, attacking the IP firewall, right? So if you don't have this DDoS feature, your uh, IP firewall will be like crawling and very slow. You, you will not get uh, uh, this uh, quick response from the web UI because the CPU would be way much higher under DDoS attack. But uh, we have this DDoS feature enabled and there is no any uh, performance uh, heat on this IP firewall. Okay, so we have TCP down installed here. So now we can run TCP down on the IP firewall to check if the if there is a sim flooding attack. Uh, we will not see the sim flooding attack, as I said, uh, because it's already blocked by the XDPD dot feature. Right? So you do not see TCP down, or you do not see packet, sim packet uh, flooding to this uh, IP firewall, okay? Now, uh, what if we disable the DDoS feature and uh, let's disable the DDoS feature and, uh, okay, let's look at the System systems our our so this is a, a graph okay and uh, yeah so anyway it's still responsive let's let's uh, disable the DDoS feature and see if the this uh, IP fire is responsive or not. Update, apply. So right now we disabled the uh, DDoS feature for this port forwarding. And we also need to unload the, disable this, disable this port. Save. So now see, there is no XDP program loaded. Uh, DDoS feature program loaded. And uh, yeah, so we can double check here. See now my, my uh, XDP, my SSH session to this uh, IP firewall now uh, stops uh, res to be responsive. And uh, yeah, okay. Let let's go check the and uh, 
So the web UI is still okay. Let's see the system. Our, yeah, it's kind of slow. You noticed I, I clicked here. The graph doesn't, uh, doesn't appear, does not appear uh, quickly. Yeah, see, you can see here uh, the graph does not show up. So the system is under uh, node. And my terminal session uh, is not a responsive. And uh, okay, let's uh, stop the same flooding attack. Okay, let's stop it. Just to make sure, okay. Now it's uh, now I got a response from the from the terminal session, and also the UI the UI show up. So you you see here that DDoS uh, feature makes a huge difference uh, when under uh, DDoS attack uh, with or without the the, the DDoS feature enabled. Okay, so for example, let's now, since we disabled the XTP DDoS uh, feature, there's no XTP program noted. Yeah, so we can enable it again, just to show how easy, how easy to enable this feature. And uh, click enable, update, apply changes, and I go to this uh, DDoS protection page, enable the feature, select the port, save. Let's click save again, just make sure. And uh, the XTP program is loaded. And uh, we start, uh, we started the same flooding attack. Uh, let's send a uh, normal request. So normal request working. Send the same flooding attack, and uh, and and our web UI. I like check the graphs. The graphs show up immediately. Very responsive, and uh, yeah, we can we can we can open another client session. And send the okay. Let's do this. Let's put the sim flooding attack at the background. And under we under sim flooding attack, let's send a lot more good request. So it's very responsive. We get a, the backend server response immediately. Right. So yeah, and uh, this is just to demonstrate how easy to enable DDoS feature from the web UI. And uh, okay, thank you.